what at all are we talking about when we say seed sowing? I, I don't know if um, Elder Patrick, can you help us? Okay, for me, actually, um, come 16th um, of August, that's um, today's week, I actually think that what is happening is a battle. The CISO in conference is actually a battle. It's happening that day on the 16th of August. Battle because we need to, in, in the, when it comes to Christians, we, we have to take some things very serious. And one of the things that we have to take very serious is seed sowing. Yep. And that's how come I've termed it as a battle. And with this battle, you need to come prepared. You need to come with your armory. And I think God is preparing us in a very special way to come on 16 and then uh, actually win this battle. In fact, the battle has already been won. It's actually a battle where there is going to be food served in the presence of our enemies. In fact, it's a battle where we are coming to take spoils. At least uh, I know King James put it that way that um, we're coming for spoils, we're coming for money, we're coming for jewelry. I don't know whether you've heard people, I mean, going around and say, oh, this girl. In poppy spoil them. Yeah, in poppy mm. spoil them with money. That's what is going to happen on the 16th. as a battleground, and Daddy has been preparing us. We also need to prepare ourselves to come and meet the Lord and take in a lot of goodies, goodies. Home. You don't have to come to the battle wearing socks. What that means is that if you are coming to uh, on the 16th, and you are coming with 100 Ghana cities, you are coming with 50 Ghana cities, you are wearing socks to the battle, you're not <laughs> going to win, actually. It's a battle where we are coming with sophisticated machines, and the least that you can come with it, 700 Ghana cities, and that's just the drone. So just imagine, people need to come with machine guns, people need to come with things that we, we, we're going to celebrate, we're coming to take things. So nobody should sit with the idea that, oh, I want to be at the back of the battle. You're going to be wounded. You should know that those in front of the battle, those who want to come with big machine guns, they are actually going to go back home with victory. So for me, today's week is actually a victory uh, um, Sunday celebration. celebration where we are coming to taking a whole lot of goodies home. So nobody should be relaxed about it. That's what it means for me when we say seed sowing. You know, when you read Matthew 6, 24, the Bible says that you cannot serve two masters at the same time. Yeah. And it's amazing that um, the only thing Jesus describes as being or can be in a major competition with him or, I mean, strive for our attention as much as he, Jesus, seeks for attention with him is money. Mm -hmm. So I quite much agree with you on... Uh, you know, explaining seed sowing from the perspective that it's some form of battle. And, you know, like you said, in a battle, you can't go fighting like the way Poland went to fight Germany. I mean, Germans are coming with machines and armories, and then you are coming with what? Bow and arrow. Yes. I mean, there's not much that you can go yes, home sir. with. Yes. Pastor Roland, what, what does seed sowing mean to you? Okay, for me, I believe um, it's, it's, it's a principle it's a principle or it's a law that God has created for his children, most importantly believers, to tap into the supernatural blessings of God. Um, I, what I mean by it, it, it's a law is the fact that when you read in Genesis chapter 28, uh, Genesis 8, 22, when um, the Bible says when the, um, the ark landed on the dry ground, um, we, the Bible made us believe that Noah came out with his family to make, make a sacrifice to God. Mm -hmm. And when God was pleased with the sacrifice Noah made, God established that law, that principle. And I, I, I want us to read it from verse 22. The Bible says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and, and day and night shall not cease. That means it, it's, it's a law that God has set for everyone who wants to enjoy his supernatural blessings to tap into. So coming 16th, um, it's, it's an opportunity God has given this house. We do it, we, we do it once every year mm -hmm. to, to be able to, you know, sow your best into the kingdom of God, to be able to receive something. Um, I don't know what you're expecting from God. I don't know what you're expecting from God this year. This year, God has declared the year as a ten in one, one year, and there's a way to enjoy it. One of the ways to enjoy it is by your seed. Yeah. So I believe um, you need to understand, prepare your mind, 
to be able to sow well next week. And you know, from the scripture you read, it says that seed time and harvest. It means that there is a specific time where you can sow your seed. Outside of that time, the seed sowing it doesn't really mean much yeah. Yeah. or anything like that. but the harvest is a consistent thing because it didn't put any caveat on harvest it's just that seed time and harvest. and harvest pastor philip um your thoughts on seed sowing okay thank you very much pastor Kia. i see seed sowing as an opportunity yeah. um one of the things i've learned from one man of god bishop he says that we don't need um we don't need god does not need us for anything but we need him for everything Mm -hmm. and one of the opportunities god gives man in so that you can reap a lot of things because the bible says that the earth is the lord's and we need things from the earth so it's a great opportunity for you to assess the phantomless the wealth that is in god Mm -hmm. and so seed sowing is like a sacrifice it's an opportunity for you to assess something big. And so um, on, on the 16th, I believe that God has given us a great opportunity. There are many opportunities. I mean, some people are there, they win an American lottery because an opportunity was given forth. They applied, they won, and then now they become citizens of America and they are excited. Maybe there's another opportunity that will be open, like a job opportunity mm-hmm. at a firm, at United Nations. And then somebody applies, and then he gets the job, and he's excited. One of the, God is giving us an opportunity on the 16th so that you can put your faith to work by sowing a seed. And actually, it is God who is going to pay you. He's been the most faithful and the most consistently good person in the world. Yeah. Man will fail you, but God has no track record of failing and it is not he's not going to start with us so it's a great opportunity i believe it's the best opportunity you can ever get in your life to go and sow a seed in jesus name and you know one other way i i see this is like um a great king um inviting you to a banquet and then he's just saying that for you to have access to all the good things that are in the banquet just um pay something to enter because you know um giving is a principle that of as much as you are giving you are expected to receive exactly. so on on that day god is just opening an avenue for us that okay the world is mine and all the wealth that is in the world is mine according to psalm 24 verse 1 and um, bb um, that's how bb puts it so god is saying that okay on this day i'm just opening my treasure store and all I need you to do is to just enter in with a token. Mm-hmm. So actually, your seed or whatever you are given on that day yeah. is not going to change God. Neither is it going to make God's bank account extra full. It's just um, a way God is extending out his love to you. And it's a way of God saying that I, I actually want to partner with you and then do great things, change the world with you. And just come in with something. You know, um, there is this interesting saying that um, you, you catch a fish with a fish, using another fish as a bait. Exactly. I mean, you can't bait God, but just to give us a clearer understanding of what seed sowing in itself is about, it's like you are just using a bait, a smaller bait, to get a bigger meat that you can consistently enjoy the benefits that come from it. So I don't know what you are thinking, but I believe by now your mindset about 16th August is changing yeah. by now. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I actually also think that you, we, at certain points in our life, we need to grab the attention of God. Yeah. Right? You get it. You've been sending 50 Ghana cities to your beloved, your mother, and then you send the same money in church so god is always looking and it's like that's what you've been saying so god is like well that's what he's going to send and all that the very moment on the 16th you drop ten thousand. you are inviting the whole of heaven you are grabbing the attention of the whole of heaven to come to your phone and be like charlie something is happening you know speaking about getting heaven's attention the man cornelius got saved through this principle the bible says that um uh, god sent an angel that his arms and his prayers has risen before him as a memorial. A memorial is like um, a, record. 
a record, a, something a that's a record, something that he recalls. It's like, I mean, so this is how, like, if we're to be talking about in our term, it looks like in our present world, yeah. God is just in heaven and then suddenly there's an, an alert. Yeah. And the alert that came is like, it's, it looks so unusual. So it caused the entire attention of heaven. And then heaven looks down and is like, it's that man called Cornelius. And I think we should desire to have God say that it is so so and so person from this place that has given so much for the entire heaven. Because I mean, God actually called for a meeting mm -hmm. and he sent someone to go and orchestrate for the salvation of one man and then eventually an entire nation and an entire generation. And you should dare in your heart to be a part of such people. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I, I know you three men of God to be ardent givers. Yeah. Right? Like, I yeah. mean, and can you just share with us what has been some of the good things? I mean, why do you still keep on giving even no matter how hard the world seems to look like i know the three of you quite well and you never withhold anything what is the secret why do you do that um, thank you very much so i think i'll start and then my brothers will follow suit um first of all i'll say i thank god for for such a heart i believe that is the grace of god that was given to me personally um, it's a grace because it's not like um, I really struggle to move into that gear of sowing seed or of giving. I believe that it is God who actually prepared, I mean, it's a special grace. I, I always see like that. And through what God is saying, through his man of God, and then how he ministers to us. I've had a lot of testimonies concerning giving. The one I would like to share is... A striking one during my school period when I was uh, in med school when there was an opportunity to go for an exchange program so I applied by God's grace I had it and then the resources to go was another hurdle to to um, to try and then cross so I was doing seed sowing time I think then was in February so around that time I knew that I had qualified and all so I went to sow a seed I remember it was the money they had given to me. By then there was there was no quota, so I just said, that, "Oh, I'm sowing all the money my parents sent me, wow. and then this is what I'm using it for. Okay. That first of all, I'll get the slot and then the money to go. Wow. And the first thing is that by God's grace, I got a slot that was fully sponsored wow. by God's grace um, by the the hospital that I was going to, and then they'll give you some pocket money as well." And it wasn't there. I thought that was enough. I mean, I got somebody to cater for my, um, my plane ticket. Somebody gave me money to cater for that. Um, someone out of nowhere just gave me $2,000. I mean, for someone to cash out $2,000 and give it to you as your pocket money or as you are going, I sent the person a letter. And then he just saw me and said, oh, OK. So he gave me an envelope, and they were fresh dollars. Wow, to get it, to the glory of God. And I think that it was all because, I mean, actually, God told me that it was because of that, that that's um, the commitment I made by sowing that mm -hmm. seed during the seed sowing conference. So from there, I have been encouraged to be sowing on different levels, increasing my giving, and God has been very great to me. Wow. wow. Pastor Roland. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Well, for me, one of the things I learned when I came to church, love economy at first, uh, Pastor Kobe is the one who brought me to church. And as my shepherd, one of the things he taught me mm -hmm. was the principle of you know, seed sowing. And it's something I also learned from Pastor T, our man of God. Um, I remember when I was doing my national service, I, I was led by God to, to sow everything that came in as my salary. Wow. So um, I, I, and I was seeing great testimonies by doing that. Mm -hmm. And it became a part of me. And because I was seeing results, I was encouraged to increase it. And I've, I've really benefited. I've, I've enjoyed so much supply from God. And one of the amazing testimonies is concerning when I was getting married. Mm -hmm. I remember um, we had one meeting in Accra, one leaders meeting. I think it was a leaders conference. 
And that time I, I was preparing to marry. And you know how the struggles people go through when they are getting married, Charlie, yeah. trying to raise money. Yeah. Because it's not an easy thing. You know, food alone can even blow your mind. Hallelujah. But uh, thank God we have God. <laughs> yeah. So I, I remember during the meeting, Daddy shared on how to marry with, I think, 5,000 5, cities or so. Cities. Yeah. And when he was sharing with us, and one of our leaders' mom was around, Elder Omer's mom, and she, she said something that really struck me. She was, she was like, if you are trying to do something, and um, when you check, and the money that you have is not able to accomplish what you want to do, just give it to God. Wow. Just give it to God, wow. and God will multiply it. So when she said that, I decided to put it to work, because I'm a giver. So I just loved what she said and decided to put it to work. So I, I remember that time I'd raised some money, my, 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 my wife and myself, and we decided to sew everything. Honestly speaking, it didn't make sense because it was actually about four so months. So your wife agreed with you? She, she agreed. That means the woman you marry is very important. It's very important. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I remember um, I prayed about it and God asked us to you know, sew into the men of God we admire in church, like those who are married, those who admire and are married in church, we, sew, we should sow into their life. So um, I had a couple of um, men of God in mind, Pastor T, Pastor Kobe, Pastor Eugene, and Prophet Adam. And when, when, when I sowed it, the testimony that came was amazing. When I was getting married, I remember the only thing I paid for was my wedding ring. I didn't rent a house, I didn't pay for rent. When I got married, a seven-bedroom apartment was waiting for me, wow. fully furnished. Wow. The only thing we bought was the curtains because they didn't know what you like. Uh, yeah, what you like. So er everything, everything. So you just carried kitchen. your bag and your wife. I just, I just carried my wife and my there. just moved into the house, and it's it's one of the amazing things I've enjoyed through seed sowing. So uh, it's it works. So I, I don't joke with seed sowing at all. It works. It works. So I'm encouraging you to, you know, really prepare your mind. Prepare your mind coming next week so that you'll be able to give well to God. You know, the testimony you just shared is just a confirmation of the blessing of the Lord maketh yeah. rich and he adds no sorrow to it. Because yeah. I'm sure as we are moving into your matrimonial home, it was all joy and all bliss. And so now we can see the fruits of that. Yeah. <laughs> Elder Patrick, how has it been for you? Uh, it's, it's been a great journey. I actually wanted to overcome fear. And I realized that one of the things that I'm afraid of is to let go uh, with whatever I have. So uh, when I got the training of giving and all that, I didn't want money to also put me under pressure. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to control money. So I wanted to give. And uh, one of the biggest things that happened during those times when I was going through the process was uh, when we were about to build Alpha and then Daddy was calling for a seed. By then, I, had, I was buying cement. I mean, if I get 20 cities, 30 cities, I go and pay cement. You're counting the cost yeah, for so, your own building. You know, and I was, I was paying, and I had done that over a year, and I've had quite a number of cement. Yeah. So when Daddy mentioned, I went to Daddy, I said, well, I will give you cement, and you know, all that. They were like, wow, fine, you can bring it. I was like, oh, I just have the receipts for it. It's like, how? I said, oh, I have receipts of a number of cement that I have paid over time and you know, all that. So I gave everything. To be very honest with you, that night when I went home, I had to do another battle altogether. Satan was like, you are giving every, all the receipts for the cement. Amazing. How would you build? <laughs> so wait, man of God, you had accumulated bags of cement over a year. Yeah. And in just one day, you decide to give it out. I just, I just want to give everything out. You know, not to even that, leave one receipt. You with know, me. that is more like um, Mary Magdalene's experience. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the perfume of oil she poured on Jesus' feet mm. was worth a year's wage. Exactly. Now let's see what happens afterwards. So I, I, I gave it out, and uh, I was really believing God. I had to overcome that fear mm -hmm. and give everything out, and I was really believing God that uh, something is going to happen. Then, when we came to church, Daddy said that if you build God a house, he's going to build you houses and all that. 
And recently, I mean, before I got married, together with my wife, we got a land, we were going into poetry. So we decided to put up a two-bedroom apartment mm -hmm. before we do the structure for the bed. Okay. To be very honest with you, we put up the building in six weeks. Six weeks. Wow. Six weeks. One month, two weeks. This do you remember how long it took to build Alpha from foundation to um, the final thing? Six Months. Six months. Yes. And that it declared a word that if you have built God a house, God, will God is going house. to build you houses. Sure. And yeah. God <laughs> built you a house in six weeks. In six weeks. From foundation to roofing to, level. Yes. We, we wow. got to that place. And wow. we, we were, were, were amazed. Even the people were doing... In fact, when we bought the land and then all that, they were all amazed. So the people trooped in calling, hey, Charlie, what's up? Right now, you've just finished with the whole thing. This is a wonder. Yes, and all of that. And in fact, with the wire, if you've built before, you know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Buying wires to do the electrical stuff is not easy. When we're given the cost for it, somebody called us. My, my in-laws, brother Paul was like, oh, uh, I'm done with my, my building. And there are a lot of wires in my house. I'm not using it. Uh, can you find a place to put it in another? And my father-in-law just went for the wires, brought everything, did the wiring. The only thing we paid for was just for the service. For workmanship. Wow. For wow. workmanship. Wow. So wow. it's been great. It's been that way. To be very honest with you, during the lockdown period, um, we started the poetry. One man who came to the site was like, are you the ones doing the poetry? You and your wife? I said, yes. He said, oh, university graduate, you are doing poetry. He said, yes, it's okay. If you are doing poetry, then you will need maize to feed the chickens. Mm -hmm. And the man dashed out five acres of land. Amazing. Wow. Yes, wow. to do wow. the farm. It happened wow. this year. This is not way back. Wow. This year, during the lock so during the lockdown period, we were planting maize. Wow. Five acres. We didn't wow. buy. You we were locking maize in the we, soil. Yes, yeah. We were not locked down. Wow. You get it. So I, I think that it, it's something that if you put there, it's like gravity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would definitely come. Mm -hmm. and then all that. So overcome that fear. If we say we are, we've not been given the spread of fear, mm -hmm. one of them is letting the money go, mm -hmm. then all that. And yeah. stop asking whether you'll be saved, whether you'll go to heaven. You're already in heavenly places. So stop asking whether if you leave the money, you'll be saved. You're already saved. Just let the money go. Your salvation includes your money, and it's already yes. saved. So yeah. let that money go. You know, actually, your ability to let the money part away from you is a way of you laying down your life as a sacrifice. Exactly. Because your money represents your sweat. Exactly. You know, when, when um, the earth was cursed because of the fall, the Bible said, cursed is the ground mm. for, for your sake. Yeah. And it says that in the sweat thereof, mm. you shall eat. Mm. So that means for money to come to you, you are going to sweat for it. Exactly. Yeah. Meaning exactly. if you are saying that this money has come to me out of sweat and mm. I'm putting it down, mm. you are just saying that, Lord, I'm laying my life down for exactly. you as a sacrifice. Just take it. And you should always know that immediately you put in the sacrifice, power is released. Yeah. Jesus Christ was Jesus Christ doing all the miracles. Immediately he died and rose again. He Power received a name. Real. And he received a name. So you should know that you are not just parting with your money. You, you are asking for a divine intervention. You mm -hmm. are calling for power and you should know that it's a sacrifice. It's your blood, it's your sweat. Yeah. If you put it down, get to know that power has been released. Wow. You know, um, personally for me, one, one amazing thing is, you know, last two years, Daddy gave pastors the target. Yeah. And then last year, I think he lowered the standard. Yeah. And I, I was just thinking to myself, I mean, three years ago, I was able to give the targets he gave. And this time he had lowered it. And like Patrick said, there was that battle, whether to just part away with what has been given but deep within I, I just could hear the voice of God say that you can do better the fact that the standard has been lowered doesn't mean that stay there and I just told God that okay God whatever it takes I would want to even if I can't do better I would still want to do what I did the previous year and so I quite remember by then I was saving up to rent an apartment and I just had to take that step 
So I did, we did the first part. I sat down and then, you know, so I gave what daddy asked us to give, but I still didn't feel that comfortable. Mm -hmm. So wherever the money was for my apartment, mm -hmm. I went to take that money and then I came to give it. And amazingly, what I was saving, the apartment I stay in cost more than what I was saving. Mm -hmm. Now, how much it says that is my percentage in that is something very small. Yeah. I, I just had people, you are just there, and then someone would just call. Yeah. And, you know, people that had even forgot, I had even forgotten about, exactly. someone just called. I remember around that, it was around leaders camp. The person just called my sister, and then talk, talk, and the person just said, okay, meet me here. The person just gave a check for us to go and cash. You are there, and then another person just calls. Like, it was... It was mind-blowing. And, you know, amazingly, I got a place where I have peace of mind. Exactly. You know, it's like I don't think of issues, tenant issues, and all those things. There is this total peace and satisfaction that I just enjoyed after that and exactly. moving there. And I just realized that consistently I have not remained on one level. Exactly. Almost every time it's like there's something it's significant issue. and something tremendous mm -hmm. happening with my finances. And one mind-blowing thing is, um, I remember in 2016, I was diagnosed with a certain condition. And from 2016, almost every year, it sort of repeats itself. Mm. And when it comes, I stay at the hospital for days. I spend money on it, like real money on it and everything. And it had a particular season in which it comes. Thanks be to God, we have passed that season and I've not experienced, I've not even seen a trace of it. Exactly. And, Amazing. you know, these are things that sometimes if you don't put your mind to it, you actually don't really see what God is doing. Yep. That's how come David admonishes us to count our blessings and name them one by one. Mm -hmm. Then you see how good the Lord has been. Yeah. And then when you see how good the Lord has been, parting away with anything that comes from you will just become something that you do so easily and everything. Yeah. You know, it, we should get to the point where actually even giving should move from the level of a sacrifice mm. to a love expression. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, when you love, before you got married to your, your wife, moving from here to where she used to stay mm. wasn't a sacrifice for you, was it? <laughs> In the initial stages when you were not really certain of the outcome, it felt like it was work for you. You don't actually even think about it. You don't it, even yes, think about I mean, it. Like, so God is expecting that we get to the level where it's like we, we consistently cry mm. and, you know, mama a lot uh, when we are parting away with money to the place where it just comes like, it's just our no, love. We, it's we, it's we an love expression you. of our we love, love to him. Love and you. even that we still can't find mm. the exact amount to quantify uh, exactly. our love for him. Because if you want to think from the perspective of the magnitude and the extent of his love for you, mm. nothing you give him will be too much yeah. to say thank you to him. To yeah. him. So I believe... And, and okay, one thing is this. I think we should not also be expecting the things in terms of monetary. Yes. Yeah. Because when you say you are rich, what it means is that you can be rich in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you speak, we, we, we get a sense of an upliftment yeah. solution. For instance, sometimes even the way you do your, 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 your things, mm -hmm. your health could be your, your richness. Yeah. So sometimes just check the amount of money you pay in the year to the hospital mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. When we say you are rich, when we say this richness are going to come to you after you've given these things, a whole year you might not be sick. Mm -hmm. A whole year, mm -hmm. you will not be paying some unnecessary stuff. Yeah. Sometimes when money comes to you, you, you just realize that, Charlie, what did I do with the money? Yeah. What exactly? You can't really account yeah. for it. It means that you are sick in a certain area. Yeah. You are falling short. You are not rich in a certain yeah. area. But to be rich in all things, you have to part with your money yeah. so that in all things, you will know that, Charlie, your health will be secured. In fact, your freshness will be secured. Uh, every you. time people see, you are looking fresh and they yeah. are wondering, Charlie, what's happening? Because you are not stressing, you are not thinking. Exactly. Because you know, um, science says that those who think, those who stress a lot tend to age faster. Uh. And you know, Third John 
chapter, verse 2 says that, I wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So once that prosperity is, is in play for you, everything pertaining to you is in order, just as things are in order for you in your spirit. Come on. You, you are going to live in, in that good place. I, I also think that <clears throat> it feels good to give. I mean, when it's only a rich man who gives. Mm. If, if it's the poor people have a mentality of always receiving. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're able to give easily, it means that you are very rich. Exactly. It means that in your mind, you have enough. Yeah. You have abundance. Because you have it in abundance, that's why you can afford to, to just let it go. Yeah. So after giving, personally, I like to, I, I, I feel good. I, I, over the period, have not given, I mean, formally, when, as Patrick said, in the training, at a point, you feel like you are departing with money, but after some time, it's good. It's just nice. I just feel good that I've been able to give to God. Yeah. That me. Yeah. In me, I've, I didn't you, give to. Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm not, I'm not giving it to. Um, excuse me, say a prostitute. I'm not giving it to something. I'm not giving in for a bad job. Somebody gives money mm. and is to go and kill somebody. Somebody gives money and is to go and steal something. Yeah. But when it comes to me, my giving is that I'm giving it to God. Exactly. It really feels good for yeah, me. Very, it's, it's, very, it's, it's, very, it's very nice. good. You, you feel so proud. You know, sometimes, for instance, if um, some of these secular musicians are coming, the way people sponsor you know? and people are very excited and choose about the whole thing. I actually turn that thing in my heart that every time it's seed sowing and all that, it's, it's, it's a time of showing, yeah. To, yeah. to show something, to so also correct. brag about the God that I serve yeah. and say, that, Charlie, I'm very proud of you, God, Charlie. I mean, let imagine me, me it this it. way. The way um, MTN would just come, MTN in collaboration with this, 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 mm. presents, manifests, or Shatawale, or mm. Sax, you know, and then it's like, it's a, so it's more or less like God in collaboration with IKEA, God in collaboration with Roland, yes. you know, you are doing this exactly. and that and that and that. Exactly. And I mean, if, if the world has so much gratification, partnering with secular things and they feel confident about it, it you know, for God to call forth a seed from you means that you are rich in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because like Pastor Philip said, a poor man would just be thinking how I should hot, hot. You know, the poor think hot, 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 hot. So they are always keeping. Yeah. They are always keep. Even how many poor people are philanthropists? No. no, you know, the thing is that now money has changed from being money to currency. Yeah. yeah. And currency just comes from the word current. Current, so it flows. Le so it flows. So all you need to do is to create a channel for the money to flow. Yeah. So if you are holding it now, it means that you are still in the archaic period. Yeah. Yeah. Money will never do anything for you. Yeah. Yeah. But if you can now get to the point where you become a system by which money will flow, that currency yeah. will just go through you, then you've created a very nice channel for it. Yeah. And trust you, me. And man of God, do you flow. actually know that um, when water current is prevented from flowing mm. and it stays at a particular place for a long time, it stinks. Yeah. So as much as you are not letting your money go, what you're actually going to experience is that there is some form of decay or stinking. Yeah. But once you are letting it go, it's like there's that continuous supply. Mm. That's in, inflow and outflow. Mm. And it's like it, there is always freshness around you. There is always newness around you. So it's actually a good thing to just open your arms and let go. Okay, so um, what do I do? After I have given my seed, do I just go and sit down and then fold my arms? What exactly am I supposed to do when I'm done giving? Okay, um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, so after giving, um, I think that the most important thing, okay, so I'll try and look at it before and after. The Bible says that God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward. So you should be very interested in your heart, your intention and your thoughts in giving. Um, and the best way to do it is that you have to condition yourself with the word of God. Yeah. And I believe the messages that Daddy is preaching together with past messages on seed sowing will help you a lot. 
I will advise that you pick those messages and have a nice camp meeting with them so that God's word will work on your heart because the heart with which you are coming to give is very important. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the Bible says that you should give ungrudgingly. It says that everyone should give what he has purposed in his heart to give. You should give willingly. You should give without grudge. So it is very key that you work on these things. And for God loves a cheerful giver. So your giving should be in, you should give um, with joy. So you should work on the grudge that will come. That means that definitely there will be a grudge. There will be something that will try and then prevent you from giving. You should work on it with the word of God. And then as you have purpose in your hearts, go and give it willingly. So your giving is willing. That means that after giving, you don't make certain statements. What you say after giving is very key. Yeah. You don't make statements like, we've given now, we are not seeing anything. <laughs> that means that it wasn't willing. You were really, it was like a compulsion. But in this time, the compulsion was not with a gun. But it was a compulsion in your heart. Mm. And the word of God will try and then take care of all these things. And then you are supposed to give with joy. As you are coming to give, be excited. Yeah. Even if it's your last money, be excited that, as for me, Oh, even if I don't get anything, I'm happy that as I lived in this earth, there was a day I gave my everything Thanks to God. God. Like there was a day, even if nothing comes back, or even after giving, Jesus comes. I'll be excited at that opportunity. I was given that strength, that grace to give that. And after giving, what is very key is that your relationship with God, from my point of view, you should continue that relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit. The issue um, comes in when people, because of most people's testimonies are along the lines of, I gave this amount, God multiplied it and gave mm -hmm. it to me. It is very powerful. Yeah. In most instances, it comes like that. But one thing is that God passes his blessings through many channels. One of the things I will touch on, I'll, 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 I'll touch on is um, ideas. God can give you a very wonderful business idea. God can let you meet somebody. So your Christian life after giving is very key. There are some people after giving, it's like I have given, like God is my bet. So I put in one, God should give me three. Mm -hmm. Because that's what the scripture, like that is your mentality. It's very limited. God will help you, but you might not enjoy a lot of things. So what God does in most instances personally with my listen that i work i work in the hospital he's opened a lot of opportunities for me mm -hmm. i've never had um, a, a point in my life when i have not been working or mm -hmm. an opportunity came or something by god's grace you get certain favors and certain opportunities will come your way so you have to implement those christian values you should be honest you don't give and after that you'll be dishonest or you'll not be somebody without without integrity so the wholesome i mean it's 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 a it's a whole truth that you should know yeah. after giving your christian life is very very key you don't live anyhow and expect god's blessing the giving is one step mm. and then after that create a room for god to bring many people exactly. in jesus name mr okay. patrick all right um i think that um first of all to give you have to understand exactly what you are doing yeah and also understand God. And I believe that God actually is the giver of all things. So I think that before you give, first go to the source and then plug yourself into the source, into the heavenly vault. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. Make the plans with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ask God, this one week left, what can I do? Yeah. I need to raise this amount of money. Do that preparation with the Holy Spirit. Get tapes. In fact, if as at now, your heart is not beating towards 16, then it means that you are not getting yourself yeah. ready. Your heart should be beating by now. You should be thinking by now how to get the money. And do that with God. And immediately you have prayed that prayer. You need to be creative. Mm -hmm. Reverend George taught us that hidden within a man's sperm is the creative ability. So yeah. if we are born of God, it means that we have creative abilities. In fact, we are creative beings and yeah. then all that. Be creative, be sophisticated in getting the money, convincing people. And I say that in getting those things done, maybe you don't have a job, 
But you are able to raise 5,000 Ghana cities from 20 people. What should that tell you? You are a very You're good, good marketer. marketer. Yes. yes. So you should also open yourself to the process that you are going through mm -hmm. and ask God to flood your mind with light so that yeah. you understand exactly what you are doing. If it is my job that has to come out of this giving, probably it will be given to you at the time of your preparation. Yeah. So at the time of your preparation, what did you do? Yeah. Who did you talk to? How did you go about it? That is your line of business yeah. in all that. That is how to open your vault. Yours might be different. I am a CEO. Probably I might be receiving from my other companies. Yeah. And, but even with that, I want more. Yeah, of course. So I also have other keys to get into it. So yeah. know exactly what is happening. Know what you are doing. Know who you are. Plan with God. Immediately you've planned with God and prayed. Take action. Put those plans into it and make sure that you get their money. I have said that is a battleground. And then the least you have to come with your sophisticated weapon that day. It's 700 Ghana cities. That's your drone. If you come with anything less than that, you have made just this. get in mind that you are wearing socks to the battle. You're going to lose. So get yourself prepared. Get your armory. Talk to the God. And don't talk and after that, sit. After talking, get into action. Get their money. Bring it. That day, bring it. It's only when it gets to um, money giving that a lot of Christians want to be at the back of the mm -hmm. pack. Yeah. And in, all that. in every war, the skilled men, the generals, they are put in front. After the battle, they never die. Yeah. Why? They are skilled men. But those who are always at the back, they always leave the battle. Some of them get wounded, but the men in front. So strive to come in front. Strive to come forward. Be a skilled labor, a skilled warrior. So I think that is what you have to do. After that, after you've done that and then all that, now you've sown the seed. If you've sown the seed, Charlie, what are it? What are it, cry? What did you pray to God about? You need to work. Get to work. Very serious about it. You got an idea to sell, let's say, um, cocoa to raise the money for the seed sowing. After the seed sowing, you've sat in the house. Don't stop. You don't want to don't sell stop. the cocoa yeah. again. Keep selling you are killing the, the momentum. You yeah. get it? And this year, we've been given the catalyst. This year is 10 in 1. God has summarized things and put it in a drink for us. We are served with the best wine. What is the Holy Spirit? So we should know that we already have what will speed the process. Yeah. If you already have what will see, uh, speed the process, start the process. Yeah. So get yourself doing something and then see wonderful things. If it is your uncle you are expecting, pray that your uncle's job will. And then after you are done with that, you got the money for me. Just expect more things from your uncle. He should excel in that way. Oh, powerful. Just to add to what he said. Um, I believe the way you prepare for it is also very important. One thing you need to understand is the fact that seed sowing is not like um, Sunday offering. Yeah. For, so for some, they are thinking that, oh, Charlie, we've been giving every Sunday, so why, why this so, is seed sowing? I've been giving. God should just add all the giving I've given on Sundays and Wednesdays and just consider it as my seed. No. One thing you need to understand is the fact that the principle that governs seed sowing is different from your offering. Yeah. When the Bible, the Bible says give, and it shall be given unto you, is that also good measure, pressing, uh, press down, shaking together, running over, shall I cause men to add? Your offering brings addition, but sowing is different. The Bible says God ministered seed to the sower and multiply your seed sown. So, so seed, seed sowing comes with multiplication. Exactly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is the one, the Bible says he ministered seeds. To the sower. So don't think that, oh, with your own effort, you are going to gather your own money and give it to God. No. The Bible says he's the one who gives us the power to, to make, to make world, world that he will establish his covenant. Mm -hmm. So the reason why God prospers us is for the establishment of his kingdom here on earth. So anyone who decides to connect with this vision, God is going to supply. Mm -hmm. God is going to supply. He says he ministers seed mm -hmm. to the sower. So, so go good. to God. Just like my brother said, go to God, partner with him. God, how much do you want me to give? For me, my, my seed was ready about like a month ago. The day I heard that pastor has set this date for seed sowing, my wife and I came to agreement. We, we just prayed. And God gave me four contracts, huge amount of money to sow. So this year, I've really prepared 
<laughs> I've prepared so much that I even called daddy ahead of time to ask him, daddy, can I give my seat today? And he was like, no, just, just hold on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So prepare your mind. Yeah, prepare your mind. I think that um, one thing we should also know is that after giving your seat, work. Yeah. Yeah. Because the blessing of God, um, I mean, comes the blessing of work. Abraham comes to what, what your you hands, touch. what your hands, what you touch. Mm. Yeah. So you don't give and sit down. No. If you are already working, when you give, work towards a promotion. Yeah. Just know that yours will be fast and easy. Yeah. If you are expecting job for a, you're expecting God for a job, as you have given, move around with application letters. Mm -hmm. Go to places and then speak the favor of God. Exactly. If you are expecting increase in your business, maybe you are selling at a certain level and you are expecting that your business should go to a certain level, give at, after giving, Put in, read ideas, look, um, look out for other things that can expand your business mm -hmm. and expect God to bless it. So actually after giving, you shouldn't sit idle, idle, sorry. You should work. Make sure that you are working. You are touching something. In the morning, you are moving out of your house. You are going somewhere and then you are coming back because God will bless the work of your hand in Jesus' name. You know, in Second Corinthians chapter 9, yeah. um, verse 7 says that according as everyone has purpose in his heart to give, let him give not gradually, but of necessity, but God loves a cheerful giver. Yep. Then verse 8 says that, and God is able to make all, all grace abound toward you, mm. that ye always having all sufficiency in all things, always. may abound in every good work. Every good now, work. my emphasis on every good work, and then all grace abounding to you. And that is after you have given the seed. So I, I don't think I would want to see someone then after 16th year done and then you are just sitting down. Some form of work has to take place. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 says that the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand, that thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just have that expectation that when you are done, the treasure house is going to be opened. I don't know what you want when the treasure house is opened. We all have our needs, our desire. The key thing is have the password to cash in into the treasure house, and that is your faith. And we've already spoken about how you can get that faith through the messages. Cash into that treasure house and then just withdraw or get whatever you need from god and like we said don't sit down there is a many people think that um, the whole concept of seed sowing is like um, is work. a fraud is because they don't do the thing with the right principle and the right understanding exactly. but i believe that from the testimonies that has been shared from different people from across the world. I don't think they can just come and sit here and then tell you something that is not true. Not and from how that we have seen from scripture that the principles really work. We want to encourage you to go all out. Don't let anything limit you. And actually, you know, your ability to give to God is one way of hearing from God. It's one way of you maturing because the devil would in no way Never. encourage you to give to God. So once you're able to defeat that thought or that voice that will want to say that don't give and then cross over and give know that you have been ushered into the place where you can consistently hear the voice of god in your life in your christian work and i think on that note we want to say a very big thank you to daddy for the opportunity mm -hmm.